Gate, the Honourable Member for Guelph. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Before I begin, I'd like to thank the member from Brossard St. Lambert for bringing this important motion forward. It's my pleasure to rise today as chair of the Multi-Party Co-op Caucus to highlight not only the economic benefits that cooperatives provide, but also the leadership on social issues and environmental challenges addressed by these innovative enterprises. The economic impact of cooperatives and mutuals is clear with approximately 9,000 cooperatives and mutuals employing almost 190,000 Canadians. The cooperative sector remains a key segment of the Canadian economy. According to data collected by the Government of Canada in 2012, there are 8,000 non-financial co cooperatives across Canada with a total business volume of almost $40 billion. It's clearly time to develop in con consultation with provincial and territorial governments, indigenous peoples, the cooperative sector, and other governments, a federal and cooperative strategy to, pro to promote Canada's cooperative sector. Co-ops exist in a number of sectors of the economy, including wholesale and retail, agriculture, housing, construction, manufacturing, and fishing and hunting, to name a few. In 2012, Canada's cooperatives had almost 8 million memberships and have paid out $607 million in dividends to their members and to their communities. The cooperative model also places an, emph an emphasis on key values like democracy, equality, equity, and solidarity. I'm particularly proud to stand in support of this motion as Guelph is home to almost 100 cooperatives, many of them incorporated federally. These include the Cooperators, Gay Lee Foods, Organic Meadow, the Guelph Campus Co-op, just to name a few. The, cooperator, the Cooperators is an excellent example of one of Guelph's leading businesses. They lead in economic activity with one of Canada, uh, Guelph's leading employers and also leading in economic returns. But at the same time, they champion social and environmental sustainability. In fact, the Cooperators is registered as a B Corporation and has led the way for many other Guelph companies to become B Corps. Another great example is Organic Meadow Co-op, first opened in 1989 by six organic farmers. They began their co-op to create a totally new food system that would deliver high-quality, certified organic, local food to consumers. These organizations operate based on seven internationally established principles, including concern for community, and are global leaders in, ac in accomplishing UN sustainability goals. Whether generating economic opportunities for new Canadians or providing employment opportunities for people with disabilities, cooperatives are addressing a number of complex social challenges. Mr. Speaker, perhaps nowhere is that social benefit more clear than in the area of affordable housing. According to a recently published study, study more than 40% of all non-financial cooperatives operate in real estate particularly as housing co-ops. It's estimated that some 2,300 housing co-ops across the country provide more than 96,000 housing units. This represents 250,000 Canadians who currently live in a cooperative home. Housing cooperatives, which can range from small buildings to large apartment complexes, are democratic communities where the residents decide how the, cooperator, or how the co-ops operate. The mission of these cooperatives is simple, to help members find suitable and affordable housing. The cost of their housing will only increase when operating costs increase, which ensures low, in, which ensures low income households living in co-ops continue to have access to affordable housing. That's why Budget 2016 introduced $574 million to renovate and undertake energy and water efficiency retrofits 
of the aging social housing stock, including cooperative housing. As of January 15th, more than 48,000 social housing units in some 1,000 co-op and non-profit housing projects were slated to benefit from this funding. Mr. Speaker, it's clear that housing cooperatives play a central role in Canada. Let me now turn to another set of challenges the cooperative model is being used to address. That is the unique health and other social services needs that exist in our communities. It's estimated that more than 500 cooperatives across the country provide tailored health services, daycare or home care. Health care co-ops can take a variety of forms, including those that are made up of health care providers or patients and community members, or a hybrid of the two. Whether providing home care to seniors and people with disabilities, or employment opportunities for people that experience experience barriers to employment, co-ops are providing crucial health and social services. Mr. Speaker, I wanted to bring to your attention one such cooperative in Newfoundland. The North Shore Central Ambulance Cooperative provides ambulance services on the North Shore of Trinity Bay. Through collective action and community ownership, this cooperative has been able to maintain high-quality ambulance services directly to the community. The cooperative model also presents a unique economic development opportunity for new Canadians. Indeed, co-ops provide, provide them with networks in their community, training opportunities related to business skills, and leadership and a variety of professional development opportunities. Cooperatives that achieve these goals operate in a variety of sectors and meet a variety of needs for newcomers, including education, health care, financial services, and the arts. Renewable energy co-ops are another great example of Canadians using the flexibility of the co-op model to achieve shared environmental objectives. These businesses integrate co-op principles, such as democratic decision-making and collective outcomes and direct them towards the creation of renewable energy. And we have a few of those in the hometown of Guelph as well, Mr. Speaker, and they're really doing well. While most of Canada's renewable energy co-ops are currently located in Ontario, it is a concept that's gaining popularity across the country due to their success. Mr. Speaker, I'd encourage all members of this House to support this motion. In conclusion, I'd like to thank my colleague for tabling this motion, which not only demonstrates the role cooperatives are playing in Canada's economy, but continues the work of our, our good friend, the late Morel Belanger, who was such a staunch advocate of the co-op movement, past chair of the caucus, and a champion for so many Canadians in so many ways. Mr. Speaker, I'd love to see this move forward and have success for the benefit of our country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.